Anthologies. For too long they have been the domain of science fiction trash and sinful horror. We here at the New Leaf Publishing Group Incorporated have looked over the dirty anthology field and said enough. Too much money has gone into the coffers of the devil's consorts and not enough is going into the pockets of the servants of God. From now on, when you think of anthologies, you will think Christian prophecies. We guarantee it! Or the prophecies within are not worth the paper they are written on. So gender is just a social construct and believing in God is a crutch. When you mix them together and give them a whirl, what do you got? Atheist T-Girl! I read the book Deceivers, which was edited by Terry James. Deceivers, colon, evil seducers in their last days of deception. It is an anthology by current Christian leaders and writers asking whether we are in the end days based on what's happening in the news and in the Bible. Big surprise, they all agree that we're at the end of the days and the rapture will happen soon. Even more of a surprise, 11 out of 14 chapters agree that it's because of the gays that this is happening. I won't be covering every chapter of the book. How many ways can you say there will be wars and rumors of wars? But I will give a slight overview of the trends they talk about and go into depth with two of the chapters. As I mentioned before, the writers believe that we are at the end of the days and that we are days, nay, minutes from Jesus blowing the horn and calling up his people and leaving us sinners to their dirty, dirty deaths. And they gave us some signs as to why they believe so. They include gay people, trans people, prayer not being in school. Fun fact, two of the people said that the reason JFK and um, Martin Luther King were killed were because we took prayer out of school. Super churches. I don't think they really think that the super churches are bad. I think they're a little bit upset that the super churches pull in super church money and they don't get that. Church is not preaching all prophecy all the time. Church is supporting liberals. Agenda 21. Obama. Caring for undocumented immigrants. Not caring enough for Israel. Happen to point out that Israel is has some issues with itself? That's a rapture. Public schools, which are a secret plot to turn all our children liberal. Liberals. Rock music. Political correctness, or PC. Belief in climate change. If you can think of it, you can probably find it in this book as a reason why the world is ending. For most of the book, you can make the same argument as to why it's wrong. Over 2,000 years ago, the authors of the Bible were saying that the end of times were now, and they were given the signs for it. All the signs, except for Israel being back, that the biblical authors point to are things that have been happening the whole time since they wrote the Bible. They've happened before and they're still happening. Quite a few of the things that the authors of this book point out as to what is evil are not things that are listed in the Bible, but coincidentally they are things that line up perfectly with the ministries they are involved in. If you're against public education, then the chapter you're writing is public education is bad and it's bringing the end of the world. About 90% of the things in this book that are discussed are things I heard back in the 90s when I went to church. And they were the same things that were in the 70s and 60s in the books and movies I read from that time. And they were the same things from the 50s and 40s from books I found in the library at my church at that time. You get a pattern here. Further and further back, we see the same things over and over and over. And yet, we're still here. If I wanted to be generous, I would say that the authors are just seeing what they want to see because that's what they've been doing all their lives. And this is just confirmation bias. Bible says there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Oh, there's a war out there. It says there's going to be earthquake. Yeah, we just had one. Some of these authors are hitting their 80s, and I would imagine it'd be nice to, after 50 years in your ministry, to see something actually coming true that you've been predicting for over half a century. And I'm pretty sure that's the case for some of these people who are writing in this book. But on the other hand, some of these people are pastors at churches that almost worship the book of Revelations. And quite a few of them have websites 
with names like Rapture Ready or books that they're trying to sell. And a lot of the stuff I'm finding in his books are what they are saying on their websites. In fact, two of the chapters I read, I am pretty sure are copy and pasted from a book they're trying to hawk. Basically, if you're familiar with biblical prophecy and what it says in Revelations, you're going to be familiar with what it says in this book. The only difference you'll find is the flavor that the author writes in their chapter. And again, that's usually influenced by what they are doing in their ministries. But two of these chapters, two of these chapters, they take what was given to them and they turn it into something totally unrecognizable. If we were to want to think about this like football, imagine on a football field, you give the player a football, you tell him to go bring it into the end zone, but he doesn't bring it to the end zone. Instead, he defecates and rubs it all over the football and starts making out with it. All the players in the field get a little worried and are looking at him. Both sides are looking at this guy like, what is he doing with that football? The cheerleaders on the sideline are trying to come up with a rhyme for defecation so that they can encourage it. And everyone in the audience is starting to regret having that third chili dog. And yeah, this simile has gotten away from me. The first one of these books is by Todd Strandberg. He runs a website called Rapture Ready. Rapture Ready, yeah. His chapter is named Media Manipulators. It is basically a 23 page rant about the media today and how it's run by the devil. How do we know it's controlled by the devil? Because it's evil. How do we know it's evil? Because it's liberal. How do we know it's liberal? Because the media promotes Obama. Ergo, everything in the media is evil. Now, one could conceivably argue most of the media might have a leftward lean, but of course there's other channels that are on the right. You have Fox News. Not according to Todd. He thinks Fox News is now liberal. I will give Todd credit he does point out one thing that drew my attention. In 1967, CBS did a special about homosexuality, and they concluded with this, and I'm going to read it so I get it verbatim. The average homosexual, if there is such, is promiscuous. He is not interested in or capable of a lasting relationship like that of a heterosexual marriage. His sex life, his love life, consists of a series of once-chance encounters at clubs and bars he inhabits, and even on the streets of the city, the pickup, the one-night stand, these are the characteristics of his homosexual relationship. I want to give Strandberg credit because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know where my church's information about gay people came from. What I just read is almost word for word what I was taught about gay people in the 1990s. Now he has more than just an accusation that the media is making people gay. He has quite a few things he's saying the media is doing nowadays that's wrong, such as manipulating the stock market so that people lost money on Facebook. Yeah, it was a really weird chapter. Yet somehow he still managed to find four pages to talk about why Obama is evil and all the things that Obama has done wrong. And he gives CNN a plan on how to get the market share back. His plan is to tell CNN to become right wing and all they need to do is open up their pockets and they will be overfilling with money. Now, so you don't think I'm picking on a guy just because he picked on a president that I happen to like, I'm going to give you some of the things that he said Obama did wrong. The first president to repeat words in the Quran. The first president to terminate America's ability to put man in space. Uh, we sort of still do that. The first president to light up the White House in rainbow colors for the LGBT people. The first president who managed to golf more than 300 distinct times during his term in office. I I'm sure he's holding Trump to the same accountability. He's getting right on that. The first president to have a law passed by Autopin without him being present. The first president to be held in obstruction of court for stopping oil drilling in the Gulf. The first president to be named by the AP as the least transparent presidency in history. Now this last one I have a bit of problem with. Uh, it's not because he's saying that the Obama administration wasn't transparent. They weren't. 
it was, that was something that Obama did promise he would do, and he was less than forthcoming with that promise. And AP did a good job in holding him to task for that. But the issue I have with it is he spends the first two-thirds of this chapter talking about how much the press is into Obama, that there is no way that the press he describes could say one bad thing about his presidency. So he can't have it both ways. Either the news had some fairness to it, or Obama didn't do what you're saying he did. And there's one other thing I would like to point out. Again, I'm going to read this before I get it verbatim. Every day, I feel more and more like I'm living in Nazi Germany. So what terrible thing is he talking about that seems like it's Nazi Germany? It's the fact that he can't be as bigoted as he wants against gay people. He accuses the media of selling the big lie, and the big lie being that gay people are okay. Now, ever since the World War II ended, people have been using Hitler and the Nazi as a measure of how bad something is. And even on the internet, it's become a meme or a bit of a law where they say sooner or later someone's going to bring up Nazi, Nazis in their speech. And normally I would just chalk this up as pure hyperbole, but we have another issue. At the end of the chapter, he talks about a woman that the news is reporting is saying that the Trump presidency is starting to look like Hitler's um, beginning of his regime. And Stanford is a bit upset saying that using the Nazi imagery is a trivialization of the Holocaust. Oh, I probably should mention the woman that was saying it was a lot like the beginning of the Nazi, the Nazi regime, she was a Holocaust survivor who went through the Nazi regime. So she was just saying that stuff she is seeing Trump do is a lot like what she saw in Hitler when she was young. And in the end, we had this pastor saying that it's okay for him to talk about everything being like Nazi Germany because he can't be bigoted. But it's not okay for a Nazi Germany survivor to talk about the similarities she sees been when she was a kid to now. Yeah, he's a nice piece of, well, think of whatever word you want to call him. Normally, this would be the end of the script. A guy thinking that he can't be as bigoted as he want to be, wants to be, so that's like Nazi Germany. Cut, let's print it, let's make some videotapes, let's get this up on the web. But no, no, the book continued. I eventually got to chapter 12, which was named Interdimensional Deception, Satan Still Demands Blood Sacrifices. <laughs> You know how in, you have that group of friends and you have that one friend who doesn't quite fit in? In the TV show Friends, it was Ross. And in this book, that friend is named Gary Stearman. Gary Stearman has a TV show and a website called Prophecy Watchers. And his chapter deals with how increased UFO activity proves the world is ending. Yes, we're getting into UFOs. In the world of Gary, UFO sightings are common and they're all verifiable. And at first I thought, okay, UFOs, we're going a little way out there. But then I remembered this is the kind of people who would like Kent Hovind to come preach at their church. You know, if Kent's um, probation officer would allow him. In this chapter, he breaks down how UFOs are really demons from another dimension and that they come to our dimension so that it can kill animals and mutilate them as sacrifices to Satan. He believes there's thousands and thousands of unreported animal mutilations out there and it's all in preparation for giving Satan blood. And because of all these increased animal mutilations and alien seeing sightings, there can only be one conclusion. The end of the world is coming. The takeaway I get from this book, and the one you should get, is that if there's a market, people will write to it and sell it and exploit it. 
even if that hole has been pounded over and over and over, they will push further into it and make more and more money out of it, as long as they can make a buck. The other thing I've got from this book is no matter how weird I think the fundies are, sooner or later they will top what I think is weird and go even further. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and comment on it. I'd really like to hear your questions about stuff. I'd like to hear what you think I did good, what I did bad. I'd like you have if you have any ideas about what I should read next or what I should cover next to put it in my comments. I've gotten a couple of first comments. They're all trolls. Oh well. Um, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notified the next time I put out a video. I'm trying to do two a week. It's sometimes a bit of a stretch, so sometimes it won't be something I read. Instead, it'll just be a live video for me talking about stuff. I hope y'all have a good day and talk to y'all Monday.